Mexico City, La Ciudad de México, CDMX, a bustling metropolis that is Mexico's capital city. Many, including myself, have overlooked this city as a tourist destination in favor of places like Cancun or Tulum. So, what is there to see and do in this, the most popular city in North America? And more importantly, is it safe to visit? Come with me as I, along with my buddy, travel across Mexico City, taking in the sights, the cultural gems, and the rich history that this special place has to offer. We start our trip in Cuauhtémoc, the cultural and historical centre of Mexico City, and there's no better way to start the day than with a traditional Mexican breakfast. Taking a walk around the city, I was surprised to see the beautiful pastel-coloured buildings which seem very Spanish and European in nature. We then headed over to the main square known as Zocalo. From here you can see the Mexico City Metropolitan Cathedral with a huge national flag outside, the impressive Palacio Nacional and the old Portal de Megaderes. All of these buildings are architectural masterpieces. Just around the sides of the cathedral is the tabernacle, and moving further on from here is Templo Mayor. These ruins are on the site of what would have been the main temple complex for the Mexica people, who lived here between the 1300s and the 1500s, and originally, the complex would have taken in the site of what is now occupied by the cathedral. In Aztec religious beliefs, this site really was the centre of the universe. Whilst you have to pay to get up close to the archaeological finds, you can see the pyramids and ruins by walking along the perimeter of the site, which is free, something that we took advantage of. One of the most unmistakable sites of Mexico City is Torre Latinoamericana, a focal point from pretty much anywhere in this historic center of Mexico City. Completed in 1956, and famously surviving the 8.1 magnitude earthquake to hit the area in 1985, it is now an icon of the city. Just a short walk from Zucalo is Tacos de Ganas de los Especiales, one of the most popular taco spots in the city, and usually with a big line outside. We stopped here for some dirt cheap tacos that tasted pretty good even despite the no frills experience. Make sure you stop here to see what all the fuss is about. We finished the day off at El Moro, a churros chain popular in Mexico City. Their churros are huge, so their portion of four will be enough to share with a friend. Make sure you also go for the hot chocolate, which is a wonderfully thick, rich and delicious treat. So now, on to another day. Taking a boat trip along Xochimilco. Xochimilco is located on the south side of the city, about 45 minutes to an hour away from the cultural centre. And this place is famous for the canal network built by the Aztecs in the 15th century. Today, you can hire a boat called a Trajenera to ride along the canals. A boat costs 600 pesos per hour, which works out at about 25 pounds. But this is before tips are taken into account. Welcome to the Venice of Mexico City. A boat ride in Xochimilco is a vibrant experience and I absolutely loved it. Mariachi bands are in competition to try and get on your boat to serenade you or to give you a party. But don't bother getting them to come onto your boat. Just enjoy the cacophony of sounds as you make your way along the waterway. All along the canals you'll find people making and selling food and drink, with the likes of fresh tortilla and tacos being made. But you can bring your own food, drink and even music systems if you want the complete party experience. The canals at Xochimilco are a real feast of the senses, with so much going on on both the water, within the islands and on the mainland. Whilst on the cruise, you can ask to stop to take in some of the sights on the islands like this cool garden centre. And if you need the bathroom during the trip, make sure you have some coins with you. You have to pay to pay. But I found the best way to enjoy this cruise along the canal was just to sit back and enjoy the unique sights and sounds on display. Santa Rosa, la de 
into day three, and it's time for a trip to the most visited archaeological site in Mexico. We got on our tour bus, and as a brief stop at Tlatelolco. Give us your best tour guide. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with my crap in it, hand. It was then time to head northeast on towards our main destination. But not before we stopped off at the glass factory, where we learned a lot about Mexican cultures and beliefs. And it's here that you can buy obsidian, a type of glass formed from volcanic lava. Interestingly, this glass can also be used as a filter to look at the sun, something that came in useful during the total eclipse of the sun in the spring of 2024. After a taste testing session and sampling some drinks, including locally produced mezcal, it was pretty much time for the main event. <laughs> Last but not least, we have mezcal. The mezcal always needs to have a warm in the bottle. So, this place is... We are in Teotihuacan. I can't say what. I'll just say this name. <laughs> Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. So, after that mouthful, here's a few facts about this sprawling ancient city. It was built between the 1st and 7th century CE, and up to 200,000 people will have lived here and called this place home. Temple of the Sun, just behind me. The Pyramid of the Sun is the third largest ancient pyramid in the world, with only the Pyramid of Giza in Egypt and the Pyramid of Cholula, located 90 kilometers away from this site, reaching a higher altitude. This pyramid was named by the Aztecs, even though it was constructed long before they arrived at this site. This place is huge. I think we're only getting to see a small part of it as well. It's crazy to think how old this place is. It actually predates Chichen Itza. One thing that stood out to me were the vivid murals and frescoes depicting jaguars and other animals on display. There's some uncertainty as to the true meaning of these murals, though they're thought to be depicting images of war and of conquest. Amongst the other many smaller pyramids and temples on show in this vast metropolis, the other showstopper is the Pyramid of the Moon. Separated from the Pyramid of the Sun by the Central Avenue of the Dead, this pyramid predates the larger pyramids of the sun by a few hundred years. Whilst visiting this breathtaking historical wonder, make sure you stop to take in the breath and the depth of this site. It truly is impossible to see everything in one trip here. Our final stop in Teotihuacan took us to the Palacio Quetzal Papaloto. Thought to be the home of a dignitary or a priest, these palatial ruins are home to more impressive frescoes and murals, including the Templo de los Caracoles Emplomados. Back in the center of Mexico City for the evening and we headed out to Plaza Garibaldi. This place is eclectic and buzzing, with mariachi and bandas filling the air. The atmosphere does feel a little bit on edge though. We were fine whilst here, but a lot of taxi drivers were surprised when we told them that we went. It doesn't have the best of reputations. So be careful if you do decide to head out here during the night time. Another day and another start with a breakfast fit for kings in Mexico City's picturesque Chinatown. We then headed over to the only castle in North America to have ever been occupied by royalty. And after climbing the 60 meter hike up Chapultepec Hill, we've made it to Chapultepec Castle. From here, we took in the stunning castle gardens and grounds, with some great facts from my own personal tour guide. Tour guide for the day. I know nothing. The Museo Nacional de Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. Heading inside the castle, the design and architecture is similar to the many great palaces that can be found in Western Europe and Spain. 
and this is because the castle was built as a summer house for the Viceroy of Spain in the late 18th century. Today, the castle has become Mexico's National History Museum, and many of the murals and artworks on display depict scenes from Mexico's War of Independence and the Mexican Revolution of 1917. On our visit, we got to see some of the conservation work ongoing within the castle. Some of the rooms, we really did feel like we were whisked away once more to 18th century Europe, with elaborate furniture displays and artefacts that wouldn't have looked out of place in the Palace of Versailles. One of the big draws and attractions of this beautiful and historic castle are the panoramic views that can be had all around. La ciudad de México, aquí Jami. What are we looking at, Tony? La ciudad de México. La ciudad de México. we headed into my favourite room within the castle. Filled with impressive stained glass windows, the way the light filters through and refracts and the brilliance of the artwork on display is simply enchanting. To sum it all up, I'd highly recommend a visit to this castle, which gives a fascinating insight into Mexico's more recent history. From here, we decided to tie this visit in with a trip to the Museo Nacional de Antropología, or the National Anthropology Museum, for an insight into Mexico's more ancient roots. A modern architectural masterpiece, I kept asking myself how that pillar kept that huge concrete slab standing above our heads. This museum is firmly dedicated to the vast and rich history of Mexico. Some of the fascinating exhibits on display in this museum include the Aztec Sunstone, possibly the most famous Aztec sculpture. There's a ball game goal that was found at Chichen Itza, and some examples of Olmec colossal heads. Many of the artifacts give an insight into ancient life, such as these instruments that were made out of human bones. There's so much to see at this museum. An afternoon really isn't enough time. to our final day, but before heading home, we went for breakfast at Sanborn's restaurant in the famous Casa de los Azulejos. It's a traditional experience and a must-do whilst you're in Mexico City. And of course, this traveling scouser has to support Liverpool FC wherever he goes. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and that it's given you some ideas for your trip to Mexico City. I'd love it if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. My next trip is never too far away. But until then, it's a ciao for now.